Good evening and welcome to round 12 of our PPG IndyCar World Series Championship 80, 1987 edition coming to you tonight from the Pennsylvania International Raceway uh, latterly known under the name of Nazareth Speedway uh, it was a, a, a double oval setup dirt paved dirt uh, track early on in its life but in 87 it was repaved and relaunched as a tri-oval measuring just under one mile which means we'll be going a little bit less than 200 miles today but uh, uh, we'll be paying out 200 mile points so short sweet sprint racing coming tonight and it'll be very interesting to see who will be coming out on top Let's see, you're sorting out a couple of things. There we are. The track itself, as I mentioned, is a tri oval uh, known back then as Pennsylvania International Raceway. Uh, just under one mile, like no, po non, uh, 0.954 or something, I think it is, miles around. And our drivers will be racing for 200 laps, which, give or take, will be about 200 miles total. And... When it comes to the points, the same point situation as always in terms of what is paying, we've got 20 points for first place, 16 for second, 14 for third, 12 for fourth, 10 for fifth, and 8 for sixth, and then sixth for seventh, and then it drops by one point down to one point for 12th place finish. The thing to, rem to remember is the fact that pole position provides one point and the most laps led will also provide one extra point in the championship. And if one then has a look at the championship standings, one will see that it is quite tight for the lead with Richard Coxon still leading. Uh, I saw him in the chat on Discord, so I believe he is here racing tonight, back racing once again after some time out. Uh, 130 points, 3 points adrift of Vadim Tatschak in 2nd on 127 points. 3rd is David Yakes on 122 points. And then our last out race winner... I believe I could remember I could be remembering it wrong. Uh, at least he finished in the top three, that much I remember. Anders Nilsson, fourth on 99 points. And Tiago Canola, who is no longer racing in the championship, still in the top five on 63 points. And considering it's going to be Quite a short race. Uh, the fuel is still the same though. Uh, each car is limited to 118 US gallons or 447 liters for the race and it is min mandatory to start the race with a full tank of fuel simply to alleviate a little bit of the calculating calculation difficulty that it entails to be checking each driver for fuel used. Uh, and each driver will have an unlimited amount of tires for the entire event. With it also being a short sweet sprint race, uh, we'll simply go and ask the question in its quote-unquote modern form, uh, which is had from 87 up to its closure in 2004. Who holds the official race lap record at Nazareth? Was it A. Alex Sanardi? Was it B. Gilles de Ferran? 
or was it C? Greg Moore. I will say I got the answer correct. Um, but it was a half a guess, I suppose one could say. Now, as we go to the track, we will see that out on track at the moment, and coming into the pits is Jules Bouchard. We'll see if we can find one out on track. Rob De Vries is out on track in the Honda-powered car, and he's coming around turn 3, and now 4, onto the start-finish straight. Finish. No, sorry, that, this is 3 and 4. Here is the start-finish uh, line. This is turn one. And then into turn two. Wide the lift out, a bit wide. And then a short, sweet run down the, down the back straight. And into the pits, we can see how tight it is as we go to, through three. And then forward as it tightens. We can see the pit exit is Almost a little bit of a shortcut compared to the track out, the actual race race track surface. Let's see. We have Oscar Tim in the Hardy's sponsored Machinists Union entry this time. I don't think that that was the same sponsorship last time. We have Simon Vatman in the. Uh, 80. Uh, I think that's an 85 uh, March uh, for Los Angeles Drywall. We have Jason White in his new Patrick Racing ride. Uh, Mike Olsen will be driving for Newman Haas. Team works this time around. Seeing, I think that is all the sort of unknown drivers as such, as we are five seconds away from race start. This has been quite a long warm-up session, but Vadim Tachak has been fastest at a race lap, presumably race pace lap, of a 22.8. That sort of proves how quick and fast this joint is. I have to be honest, I could never guess a winner in this one. It could be absolutely anyone. User joined your channel. Nice, nice to see you there, Ian. Uh, I'm unsure who MS is. Uh, maybe uh, Matthew. Nice to see you guys. And uh, Jason, obviously, listening in. And uh, BL, as usual, as we are joining the booth as we go over to the race session by Alberto Ibanez. Good evening, Alberto. Yeah, good evening, Jonathan. Good evening, everybody. How is it all going here in Pennsylvania? Um, quick, sweet, and dangerous, I suppose, is the way to describe it. <laughs> this is really one of the most dangerous tracks uh, that you can that you can find in the in the whole schedule. This and Phoenix, because these cars were by this time already way too quick for these multi-news. I mean, one mile oval with three turns and that fast king and everything. It's it's really nasty with all that banking. Mm. We're going to see probably many accidents tonight, and it's going to be a survival race. Isn't isn't this the place where Michael Andretti had a run-in with another driver and it looked very bad indeed? 
Yeah, well, it's been the, the obviously the witness of many accidents, and um, by the time it was dropped, it was pretty evident that the cars could no longer uh, drive safely in, inside here. So, besides the race promotion problems and all that, it's really a big issue. And well, we, we will see it very clearly uh, as the race goes by. Yep. So to quickly give it a, the leaderboard, uh, don't know if we will start to play the w right away. You, maybe you can tell us. But Vadim on pole, Ray Ridol second, Yakes third, Hackman fourth, Wilkes fifth, Slapinski sixth, Puchard seventh, Coxon eighth, Equino ninth, White tenth, uh, mm. De Vries eleventh, uh, Sabre twelfth, Grant Ridol thirteenth, Lucian Rotha fourteenth, Amaral fifteenth, Matthias da Silva sixteenth, Paul seventeenth, Chacon eighteenth. Uh, also 19th, Jon Tim 20th, Oscar Tim 21st, and Simon Wattman rounding out the grid in 22nd. And I went way too quick because we're go going for one more warm-up lap. <sighs> oh dear. <laughs> well, it's a very short track, and that means that a strategy is going to play a role here, because obviously if you dive in for the pits, this is not like Indianapolis or Pocono, uh, you are going to see many people overtake you here as soon as you go with green flag into the pits, so... Yeah, I suppose yeah, cool. the... Here, as the safety car is about Ooh. to enter the pits, yeah, it does it very slowly. I believe this is uh, very close to what uh, uh, mm -hmm. Phoenix International Race win, uh, like the first round, and I think it's the final round in the CS Championship, uh, mm -hmm. is like, where it's very short. Yeah, it's a, it's a track pretty wrong. much like Phoenix, only with different banking in some places. But here you go for the start, we got the green flag. So green flag is out and we are underway. Let's see Tachak in the lead. Uh, Ray Ridol remains second, Yakes third, Shapinski fourth. And then everyone else streaming past. So far so good. Looks like everyone will make it to turn three on the first lap. Ooh, Borson, uh, I think that was uh, Little Al. Very close together there. I hope they also... And there you go. Boss has been, in, has been collected by Oscar team, and well, this is the issue here. And things oh, so think Oscar Tim with a, a without the start a rear because, wing, holy moly, that's just dangerous. Yeah, and little, I was likewise. going very slow. Oh, and Boss with a broken uh, left front as well, either a puncture or a full-on suspension issue. Amazing that the, they didn't fly the, the yellow flag here. Oh, and Oscar Tim trying to head for the pits, but. Uh, Oh dearie me, there he goes, finally into the pits and safe out of the way of everyone else. That's very unfortunate for both of them. I, th I think Bors... Many damaged cars already. Indeed, I think the Bors had a little bit of help in that spin, but uh, that's just how things c go, unfortun unfortunately. So Tachak still in the lead after four laps. Yakes second, Ray Ridol third, Strapinski fourth, Wilkes fifth. Buchard 6th, doing very well. Uh, Rob de Vries likewise 7th for Gallus. Coxon down in 8th at the moment for True Sport, but his his uh, strength is uh, later on in the stint, as we've seen previous. Adam Hackman in 9th and being passed by uh, David Sabre, who's up to 9th now in the Fast King Turn 1, up the inside and passed. And then we have Matthias da Silva and Grant Ridol, Grant Ridol making his way past, and then Jason White, I think, in uh, 12th or 13th. 13th it is for Jason, indeed. And here comes Chacon. And here is uh, Vadim Tachak once again. And the lap and the cars not even having troubles already being lapped in the form of the Los Angeles drywall entry. Obviously uh, one of the slower cars in the field, so in a way that's understandable. Well, Rocha and Tim in a nice little fight here. Let's uh, jump on board with Rocha for a lap or two. I see he's very wide. Ooh. Nearly striking the wall on the exit of four. Looks like Rocha is uh, striking with the understeer in his car. And I gotta say, if, it's, if there's anything you do not want on this kind of short track where there's three turns and they're all very, all very tight, it's understeer. No, you don't. You, need, you really need the car to be able to go around the turns because the, the speed that you are making here at the apex, how quick you go through the corner is everything. And you need to be set up for accelerating on the outside uh, of the on the exit of the turn. 
and that's something that you are not going to be able to do properly unless you rotate the car completely. Indeed. As Hackman now also proving a bit of understeer. Here comes Grant with a great run. Holy moly! What a difference a bit of turning makes. Yeah, well, in overs in general, but here also in this kind of short tracks, it, it also happens that if you lose a bit of speed, all the other cars are coming so quickly that the difference in the closure rate is huge. And then you also have the turbo as well. Where yeah, that's the turbo lag too, yeah. Where it's like you have one one, one play, one uh, like exit speed where you have the turbo and anything else below that and you have nothing. So. There's Little Al now in the pits, probably with a damage car. I think that he got some damage early on in the race. Oh, that's and, unfortunate. Well, yeah, I mean... Oh, he has quit. So it seems that the car was indeed damaged. Mm. As uh, Simon Wattman gets out of the way of Grant Riddle there. As he is now up to ninth and chasing after uh, David Saber. As Hackman and Matheus da Silva is having a battle behind. Oh, and now up the inside goes Jon Team past both of them. Or maybe not. Matheus da Silva going around outside. Wow! Oh, but a lot of understeer here now. Here comes Jon back again, trying to retake that position. Oh, and look at that. What turning he has in that car, y does Jon Tim? Wow! But will be said, we've seen uh, both Jon and Oscar have some very good handling cars, if a bit fuel hungry, so maybe that is going to pay dividends here today. Yeah, in this short track, same as Milwaukee and Phoenix, well, it's going to be an issue. Uh, because you got the throttle wide open a lot of time and you're accelerating. So, uh, as the race progresses, I think that we will see people trying to settle more into the rhythm and keep an eye on the foil gauge. Mm, looks like the battle is on from 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th down. As there's a lapped car in between all of this, I think that's Bruno Chacon or maybe Luciano Rocha. Uh, it's... Uh, Vadim Tasiak, the leader, is now approaching Luciano Rocha. So it's uh, Bruno Chacon and uh, unfortunately Rob De Vries is caught out here. Over a very, very, very wide run, trying to get a run on Chacon down the front straight. Here he goes now up the inside. And, and Ray Ridol, who was up the front. going into the pits, probably also for repairs. No, he's on the grass now. Oof. As Mike... Uh, Mike Olsen makes room as Matheus da Silva is out. Yep. Damage car, I would guess. Oh yeah, Fr looks like a puncture, right front puncture, no front wing, presumably a lot of damage to that car. Probably under, probably got in dirty air and understeered quite wide off. So Tachak passed Jason White and passed, uh, that is uh, Simon Wattman once again. David Yeek's second still, with Slapinski still in third, but now with Coxon in behind. Followed by Wilkes, so Coxon finally finding some pace in the car. <sighs> some of these drivers will be will probably be playing very a very dangerous game. How fast can you go through the turn? Where is the actual limit on every single lap? There's also probably a bit of an understeer, either understeer issue if you're following another car that close. Mm. And it looks as if Coxon is really quicker than Cesarius, but doesn't find the opportunity to get by. It's effectively like always 
Um, it's one thing to catch a car, but obviously a completely different one to try and pass. Yeah, this is a very narrow track. I mean, probably also one of the differences with Phoenix is that one. It's a bit narrower and you can feel that. Then, like I said, the banking is slightly different. And whereas in Phoenix, you got some passing opportunities in the main straight going into turn one. You don't have that here. No, indeed. Ooh. That looks some kind of lag. Uh, Coxon and Wilkes in close proximity. Thankfully, it was. It looked like uh, Wilkes was diving up the inside, but it was not the case. And it seems that the Cyrus has been able to run away a bit, but he's now in traffic. And well, all the difficulties for passing are also happening for lapping. He's now in the middle of a group of cars. As you say that, uh, there was a close call between, I think that was Oscar Tim, who has a fast car, but obviously got held back by uh, the early unfortunate incidents and now trying to keep out of the way but also run his own race a uh, bit of a difficulty to do so meanwhile Tashak is on his own there in the front 2.5 seconds in front of David Jakes who is well ahead of Cesario Slapinski. Foxon and Wilkes in hot pursuit of Cesario, but Bouchard is now in the middle. It'll be a very, very busy afternoon by, for everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's, as you say, it's difficult to, to lap, and obviously, as a lapped car, you sort of want to get out of the way, but, like, where do you do it? Now Coxon trying there on the outside. Whoa! He might but have it. Ooh. I think no, I think it was actually an attempt to get Cesarius to block on the outside and then be able to die for the inside. But truly really complicated. Here they are now through the kink. And as you can see, Cesarius is moving away. Probably has more wing. Uh, sorry, Richard has more wing than Cesarius because he catches up well in the turns. But Cesarius immediately goes off in the, in the open areas. Could also have to do with push. But you can see here how much cleaner the exit for, for Richard Coxon was. That's of course a good receipt for passing. But then again, you run out of, of tarmac, basically. Oh, wow, surely not. Well, there he goes on the outside. That's nice. Let's see Cesarius. No, he's able to keep it there. Side by side again here, but no. The good line is for Cesarius in this situation. Yeah, Coxon had to had to back out of it to get the car back down and obviously off the boost a little bit presumably and no no move to be had. Now Hackman must be running with some damage because I can't explain otherwise how slow he's going. Oh whoa, whoa Ooh. Wilkes there passing Bouchard and but what's Bouchard doing? I mean, what's his position in the deck? He's, he should be letting Wilkes by. I don't know why this incident even happened. Oh, and Wilkes on the grass being almost looks a little bit agitated. Up the inside here again. Now he gets the position done. I think we do. We, I did see Hackman run with a lot of understeer, so. Maybe that's what's forcing him to be so slow. He has too little wing, maybe. And that's causing him many issues. No, I'm, I mean, this is very, very continuous, so it's not even overheating of the tires. It's just that probably he's running with a lot of damage there. And Bouchard is now racing the guy in sixth position, which is Rob de Vries. Uh, I will say Rob uh, d dove up the inside a little bit, checked up and was off the boost and Bouchard, uh, I would say, ran his race and a bit tight, but he did leave 
rob enough room in the next turn and all is well, more or less. Grand Free Dalder trying to negotiate the traffic. Both teammates, Jason White and David Saber and the Patrick team were together in the track and nearly ended very bad. Now we can see also behind Grant how fast Oscar is in the turns. Now trying to go around the outside of, I think that's Jason White in the number 20. Meanwhile, I should say that the leader has opened an even bigger gap to David Jakes, who is in second. Ui, Coxon now coming to what is an authentic traffic jam. Trying not to lose contact with Cesaris, but Cesaris is either better luck or is managing better out of the, of the turns. And has been able to put some cars in between. Look at that from Jon Tim. In a racing situation, trying to catch Grant in front, but lifts out and goes to the inside to let the leader pass. That's almost overdoing it a little bit, but very nice and sporting to do when there's the opportunity and he feels it is safe to do so. And also with the laps being so short, the leader is already going to lap people who are in rather high positions. Indeed, this is now ninth position that Vadim is flying past in the form of Grant Riddle and the Michael Andretti Craig Racing car. It looks like Ray and David is having a nice little scrap here. It's Newman Haas versus Patrick Racing. And the situation as of now, with only three points separating at the top of the championship, which are costing 130 and Vadim 127. David Jakes 122, which is close enough. It's, this is very hard because this would have an impact on the championship at this, as it stands right now. Indeed. With Vadim being the first, and Coxon by now being fourth. David Jakes second. I mean, this is shaping up to, to be really a sprint towards the end of the championship. Everything's still undecided. and. Hopefully, it will still be for another one or two races. Very dominant in drive from Vadim here. Indeed. Only one able to somewhat follow him right now is uh, Dave David Yakes. When the battle is still on between Ray and uh, Sabre here. Yes, we are now looking down from a zoomed in shot from a, uh, what I think is a blimp. As now David up inside, down the front straight. Maybe. N not quite. Oh, and then uh, David Yeakes gets into. The mix as well. Goes round outside and puts a lap on David Sabre. 
Uh, one of the things with this small tracks is that it's so complicated to keep track of who is in what, in what position. Ooh, Grant's uh, scraping the wall there. With Jon the Tim trying to go up the inside on the extra four. And Grant now looking to looking at, on, at quite a bit of understay. I wonder if he has picked up some damage from scraping the wall then. That will let uh, Jon Tim go past. Oops! Again in the wall for Grant. I think that his front tire, front right tire, has overheated badly. Has put him in the wall, and he's now stopping, stopping up there. But I think he has oh, picked time puncture. damage. And yeah, yeah, he and now should it's a be diving for the pits. I think it's just because Francisco Morales is coming now. Oh, yeah, I think, you, I you, think you, he's you. just looking for what is yeah. like a clear opportunity to to go for the pits here. There he yeah. goes, nicely done. That's unfortunate for him. He had a good scrap with Jon Tim, Francisco Amaral inside the top ten as well. And now Ray in inside of Saber. Bit of side by side contact between them in turn four. And look at that, Ray just straight steaming past down the front straight. As Richard Wilkes says the fastest race lap so far at a 22.9 for Hemelgarn Racing. So that's at fourth place. Coxon has dropped to fifth. As Grant has unfortunately decided to park the car. So I wonder if Coxon got caught out by traffic somewhere as he now has Rob De Vries for very close company as well. The Gallus Racing entry putting in its worth with the Honda power plant. Will be interesting to see what that power plant can do if it runs the whole race. As Wilkes again with the fastest lap. So Wilkes lighting up the timing timing tables and the balls around the track. Ooh, and that's aggressive by uh, by uh, Schlapinski to lap Jon Tim and uh, Simon Wattmann in one fell swoop. Gives him a little bit of distance to Wilkes. But Wilkes now right up his gearbox once again. And we can see that as the stint progresses and the cars are using the fuel, Wilkes seems to have a much more stable car than Cesarius. Cesarius has the tail of the car going all over the place, whereas Wilkes' car is much more planted. Mm, indeed. And in this case, it's a one-to-one -one comparison because they are driving both the same car. It's a March 87 with Cosworth power. So it's a setup thing. Well, I'm driving, obviously, but mostly setup thing. And look at that. I mean, it's so much more stable in the case of Wilkes compared with Slapinski. Here you're dealing with traffic all the time. And Slapiski is being indeed very aggressive because he knows that Wilkes is probably quicker than him if they are on or in front of an empty track. So what he's doing basically is trying not to get uh, to allow Wilkes to be too close to him. Indeed. It's amazing we've gone over a, over a quarter distance and no pit stops for fuel yet. I think we should be looking at two pit stops. Mm. So basically one third of the distance. Indeed, if I remember correctly, la la when we did the 88 season with the... Uh, naturally aspirated uh, Chevrolet stock block. Uh, that could do the whole race with no fuel stop whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Although ov obviously running a few seconds off the pace, but it was possible to do the race with no stop. 
And that's a big plot that it's not exactly the most economical thing around. Hmm. So imagine how much fuel, well, methanol actually, these turbocharged things are using. Indeed. Now Jake's is getting much closer to Vadim. One point something seconds, so it seems that he has been able to up his, his pace. Probably also a bit of a setup thing because the cars will change a lot during the, the stint because of the full consumption. So probably Jake has his car raked up for the end of the stint. And Vadim instead has it to be very strong at the beginning, which explains what he why he was able to uh, get away so quickly. All that being said, Jake's car looked a little bit nervous going through turn two. But he is definitely going quicker than Vadim right now. And again, Jake's car is a little bit nervous through two. I suppose maybe Vadim's car is even more nervous than. Rob de Vries here still chasing Richard Coxon, both negotiating traffic. And he sets the fastest race lap as well. And I suppose at this point it's simply a... If you get a clean lap in, you will go faster than fastest lap. As Wilkes now oh, goes at yeah. the 22.866. Yeah, probably due to the low fuel load by now. Indeed. Oh, will uh, Rob De Vries into the pits? I'm fairly sure. No, okay, just taking a tight line on the entry to get the, up the inside of uh, the Patrick Racing car. I think that was Jason White. No, that's David Saber. That's Saber in the 20. Oh, right. So, now open track for both Cesarius and Wilkes at this point. And Will should be speeding up, I guess, to try to overtake. Although, we're coming really close to the first stop. Uh, presumably around lap 70, maybe 75? Would that well, be I a don't know. relative estimate, maybe? It's 200 laps, so 70 would already mean 210 laps. I don't think that they are doing that, but remember, the, as per the rules, you need to start with a full tank. So, it depends on the mileage that you can get. I mean, you can... Everyone has started with a full tank, but well, then... I think that was Jan Tim into the pits. Uh, no, it's uh, Simon Wattman. Yeah. But then they can play with the strategy if they are able to economize the fuel, but I don't think that anybody's going to do that. that they will be just basically cranking at the boost if they, if they have more tolerance with the fuel. And there goes Cesarius into the pits, and Wilkes has decided to try to undercut him because he was also signaling the pits, but he probably thinks that he can have still one, I don't know if maybe two laps here. So he's basically trying to, to overtake Cesarius while Cesarius is pitting. Let's follow this situation. Indeed, and Coxon has caught back up again, as both of them look to be heading into the pits. Yep. So there indeed, they over trying the overcut, running longer than the driver who pits early. Let's see how that works out for them. Cesario is still in the pits, by the way. And Ooh. as he goes out, Wilkes goes in. Wow, we. He still makes it to this pit stall, though. That's good. Oh, bad luck for Wilkes because there is Rob de Vries right in front of him, very close by. I don't know if Wilkes will have enough space there to take off quickly. Well, he's definitely trying it. It looks like no, he's actually decided it looks like he's going to reverse. He does. Ah, he has aye, to reverse. Aye, aye, aye. So that loses him a second or two. And that means Coxon is out in front. That's that's how 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 li how little can actually make a huge difference. And let's, let's see, see what Cesarius does. Cesarius coming here with Yakes in close company. Yakes a lap ahead. 
You see with hotter tires, warmer tires. There goes Bouchard into the pits. So they have indeed been able to overtake Cesarius. So the overcut them. definitely worked. Also could be a matter of having changed only two tires instead of four. No, I know for I know for a fact Wilkes looked like he changed four tires. Okay. Both sides of the car lifted up. Oh no, don't tell me Vadim is heading for the pits again. Oh, okay, maybe they ran long. X really long. Wow. That's extremely impressive. Right, so Cox are now in third. Oh, and he strikes the wall on the exit of four, sorry, two quite considerably. So Vadim and Jake now in the pits both of them. Uh -huh. So, Coxon and Wilkes now on the lead lap. And Jake's score still is in the lead. <clears throat> Vadim now coming out and overtakes just in the last moment David Jake's. And here comes the, the duo of Coxon and Wilkes. Coxon trying really hard on this full tank car. Because with the wall strike and then running the, quite a high line looks like he is definitely trying hard it'll be about a seven second difference but he will be a little bit closer than he was before the pit stops it definitely looks like Wilkes car is a little bit quicker on a full tank compared to Coxon And I'm starting to wonder to what extent Cesarius has actually been holding up them both a bit. Because the difference by now is big and they are going quicker. And there goes Wilkes up the inside. Looks like Coxon more or less let him have it because he knows he's not as quick right now. Oh, and the problem for Cesarius now is growing from behind, which is Rob Debreus. Who is now eyeing Cesare's fifth position? Oh, you do. Cesare is getting bottled be behind Simon Watman. That nearly ended in tears. Wilkes now moving away from Coxon. And as you say, since Coxon has bruised the wall, probably there is a bit of damage there. I can see his car is under steering a bit more. Yeah, he hit the wall the first, first lap, I think, out of the pits. He struck the wall. Oh, there he goes again. Yeah, he's definitely suffering under steer. That car is still handling now, and this is a big problem for Coxon and his championship hopes. Meanwhile, Cesarius is being hunted down by Rob de Vries, and they are both coming very quickly to Richard Coxon, who is losing speed by the moment. Look at that, there they come. Coxon trying probably to cool down his tires a bit. Oh, surely not from Rob. Wow! What a move! Round outside on Schlapinski in turn two. That was truly skillful. Holy moly! Very impressive there. <laughs> wow, holy moly. <laughs> right, now he's uh, right behind Coxon, trying for the move. And l Wow, yeah, Coxon is really ailing. There he goes, Rob around outside. So much more speed in the turn. So I wonder if Coxon will simply try to soldier on for as long as he can and pit as early as he can when he has fuel to do simply one stint and repair the car and hope that he can score some points with that because at that pace I don't think he's scoring many points at all well this is a big attrition race so probably he's betting on staying there till the end and see if he can fish some points but yeah his championship hopes are taking a big downturn here But now with Rob being so quick, question is if he will be catching up with Wilk soon. Although 
remember that with these cards, the boost is <laughs> the boost stop is about everything. So it's it's still doubtful if Rob is actually using very high boost and then he has to economize towards the end of the race. We need to see that, but it would surprise me because it's a very big speed differential. Mm, indeed. So while, we will, well, while we've been watching the front of the field for a while, uh, Tachak's still leading, obviously. Jake's second, Wiggles third, De Vries up to fourth, Shapinski fifth, and Coxon trying to hold on to him in sixth. We then have Saber in seventh, Jon Tim in eighth, uh, Ray Ridol in ninth, Jules Bochard in tenth. We have Francisco Amaral in eleventh, and his fellow Brazilian Luciano Rocha in twelfth. Scoring the final point in this race at the moment. Uh, Hackman in 13th for AJ Foyt. Then we have Jason White in 14th. Who with a bit of understeer there it looked like. Uh, Bruno Chacon in 15th. So those two running close together once again out on track. Ye Simon Watman in 16th. Staying out of the way of uh, Oscar Tim. Who is unlapping himself against him in 17th. You have both... Still out running, and I think he's the final car running now in 18th, with our retirees so far being Grant Ridol, Mike Olsen, Matheus da Selva, and Alberto Iquino. And either uh, Coxon's tires have recovered a bit, or Cesarius is going much slower, because Coxon has been able to stay with him, and seems to be much happier running now. He's able to bring the car down to the apex. Although the fact that Francisco Amaral is able to stay with them probably indicates that they both are going slower. Let me check that in the lap times. Well, I believe presumably Coxon is running within the limit of what a car can now do with the damage he has sustained. Uh, this might be Schlapinski's uh, m more comfortable pace. Uh, compared to what he was doing previous, where he may have been going hell for leather at a, as a complete lunatic to try and stay ahead. Well, compared with the pace that, for example, Rob is, is having, uh, who is, by the way, already right behind Richard Wilkes, but compared with them, they are a good half a second slower, so I think that probably Cesarius also has a bit of a damage in the car, or has realized that he would not be able to be and therefore they both are going slower and that explains why they are together in the track. So let's see what happens now between Wilkes and Prop the Priest. Yep, we are on board with Wilkes looking back towards the uh, Gallus Racing entry, the Valvoline sponsored uh, number oh, 3 I think. That, no, that's not number 3, that is number 15. It is, yes, it's unless I'm mistaken, your Brabham's car. Indeed, driving just like a Brabham too, going around outside. Going all out for the positions. Ooh, bit of close there with Rocco for the lapping, but uh, all good. As the battle continues. And I think the breeze with a decent run here. Maybe with the chance down at turn three. Definitely trying as Wilkes lift out, oh. lifts out very early. Oh, and uh, Bouchard being lapped there in the uh, uh, in the Penske. Penske, very, thank very, you. Very skillful move by Wilkes. Uh, very experienced one. The way he put Bouchard in between him and Rob the Fears. Uh, Rob didn't see that coming and ended up bottled behind Bouchard. I don't know how much experience Prop has uh, driving ovals. I know that he comes from a world racing background, from AMS group, but maybe he has more experience in ovals, I don't know. But if that's not the case, it's incredible how well he, he has adapted and he's doing here. This last one, however, that was something <laughs> coming from a veteran <laughs> like Richard Wilkes, um, and that was also very skillful. But Look at that, Rob is now at it again. Yeah, Rob is really driving this Honda powered uh, car very well indeed. I believe he is in a march as well. So, 
Yes, uh, both chassis are identical here, it's March 87. The difference is that uh, Rob has an Honda engine, you don't have an Honda engine in the back, whereas you have the, the typical crosswalk. Okay, that was uh, scary. Rob had to lift out and the car immediately just said, I'll go straight. Um, so that was a, he lifted out, immediately realized, oh dear, that is not going to work either. And tried to no, get a bit of on and the car... A bit the steering wheel. Indeed. Probably just release the steering wheel because if you lift the car force to the inside and if you push the throttle too hard, it, it drifts outside. So that's, that was a, a steering correction, which seems to indicate how, well, how, how close they are. And the passing here must be done having really come close. Because otherwise it's impossible. Ooh. You, you, Oh, you, 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 you box it here Ooh. behind Jason White. And it's me. impossible to gain enough momentum here with all these turns and, and the slow and the small track. This is not like Indianapolis or Michigan or whatever. So you need to be really close, hoping there for the error on the car in front uh, when coming out of the turn or when getting boxed behind another car in traffic. So Indeed. to be able to capitalize from that error, you need to be very close. And that's one of the most tense situations that anybody can imagine. Quite. I mean, racing this track and with the traffic, it's a bit like if you're at Indianapolis or similar, it's it's effectively the Grand National. There's so much room everywhere. And then this, this is like racing in a phone box. It is, yes. Meanwhile, at the front, the situation is nearly repeating the fight that we are seeing here because David Jakes is now really close to Vadim. Partly, probably, because they are coming to a big chunk of traffic here. Yes, we are also Vadim was on the, the inside. Yeah, Vadim was on the inside of the track, uh, on the inside lane, I mean, to negotiate the traffic and Jakes skillfully stayed on the outside one until the last moment and then he was able to throw the car in and that gave him another chunk of distance close to Vadim. I look at that, Vadim is really low lining it. Indeed and Yeek's now quite close, this could be an opportunity for him. Here comes Jakes. Indeed. And the distance after that traffic, relatively the same, about half a second for tennis. Really interesting how the top six are running together in pairs. There's Coxon with Slapinski. Oh, Coxon spins! No! Just as I was saying it. Ooh, you, 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 you. I think he didn't touch the wall. Which means he, he did not get any damage in the rear. If it didn't. Those are very cooked tires right if now. It isn't, if it didn't, that is very lucky indeed. Oh, another spin. That's your team. Oh, he did hit the wall, but maybe only with the rear end. So oh, maybe Oscar, the rear Oscar end is okay team. on his car. That was a square rear end hit. Was that Oscar Tim, you say? Yes, Oscar, I think it was. So Rob de Vries is meanwhile in the pits. That's, that's interesting. I also, wonder if he did not get the rule about the starting few. Oof, so Oscar Tim was actually heading for the pits with a rear right puncture. And that's why he ended up in the wall. Oh, and he spins again with that rear puncture. Oof. That's unfortunate, but at least he made it to the pits. It's a possibility, but either way, the battle is on. <sighs> and 
remind me, did they have did they have a use uh, um, changeable uh, and roll bars in these cars during the D eighty seven season? Uh, yes, they did. I mean, they could tweak both the front and the rear uh, roll bars, and I'm pretty sure that they are doing it big time during the during the stints. So I wonder if that's what Coxon's done to try and uh, salvage the car a little bit. Obviously, yes. that's, then that uh, spin was you maybe. You can always try to. Hmm, you can always try to to work around the issues in the cars. Mm. And I'm thinking that maybe that spin then was a result of obviously trying to work around the issue but uh, like not prepared, not quite used to how the car would be and uh, when he did something he hadn't done before with the car in the new state obviously the car gyrated and he found out that okay I can't quite do that. Let's see a little bit further back. Jon Tim up into 6th now with Sabre 7th. Bouchard in 8th. De Vries back out in 9th. Ray Ridol running in the 10th spot. Francisco Amaral still 11th and Rocha still 12th. Hackman in 13th with Jason White still in 14th. As he's being lapped by uh, Tadzek. Uh, Chacon in 15th, uh, Jakes going past him. Uh, Simon Wattman still in 16th, and Juha Bos in 17th. And I believe no longer the last car running because Oscar Tim is still in the pits making some repairs to his car. Jakes needs to be very aggressive now because he's losing the train with Vadim. Oh, Wilkes now bottled there in traffic. He's between Rai Ridal and Bruno Chacon. Yeah, he's catching up with Jakes. It's a bit the same situation. It's no wonder that Jakes is in a hurry. He's losing by the and at the same time he's being hunted down by Wilkes. Indeed, and this definitely proves how much Slapinski was holding Wilkes and Coxon up towards the end of the first stint here. <laughs> As we're now looking from on top Wilkes' car. We can visually see how much he is closing on Yakes. Yeah, and between the spin and everything, Coxon is now in fifth position, but with the leader about to lap him. Five seconds ahead of David Jakes. Not so much. Okay, I was wondering why was Tashak now slowing down. That's because there was traffic ahead. It's mm. it's very obvious to me that Vadim is being very cautious. Very, very cautious. Obviously, he's in the lead. This would put him in the lead of the championship as well. And he doesn't want to make a spot. I mean, he probably, of course, as any competitive driver, he wants to win as much as anybody, but he's obviously starting to drive here a lot with a calculator in mind. Mm. Jakes instead is a bit more aggressive. He's in third position in the championship, and, and for him the main task is not uh, to allow uh, too big of a gap to open between him and Buddy, because this is one less race. We're going then to Pocono, and then we will have only two more races. Those are two road races, Laguna Seca and Tamiami. Mm. And then 
we have in third place now dropping back a little bit, uh, possibly held up a little bit in traffic, uh, Richard Wilkes, whose only aim is to win the race for a bit of, yeah, bit of extra glory it's for the season. Out of championship contention, so for him it's a matter of individual results. Oh, as that is a car heading into the pits with a puncture. Was that Rocha? Look like... No, it's Rob de Vries with a puncture. Oh dear. Well, that puts a spanner in his works, unfortunately. It's very unfortunate for himself, but uh, one of those things. Possibly trying just a bit too hard. Oh, Rob de Vries is still in the pits? Uh, he had he had a puncture and maybe he had some extra damage too that he felt he needed to repair from that. Aye, 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 aye. Not sure exactly how we hit how we struck the wall, but he at least pitted with a puncture. Looked like to the rear right. It's interesting, 126, uh, 127 miles, that's Cox, that's Wilkes does the fastest lap, back down to the 22.855 now. Uh, I was going to say as uh, about three, make that about two seconds covering the top three after 127 miles. Yeah, they are a bit held up now behind Coxon. We who is just being lapped now. Fick jag inte klia dig, Lucy. Okej. Får jag komma loss då? Tackar. Så, oh! That is indeed very close. Well, Wilkes with an opportunity now as uh, Yakes was boxed in. Oh, and Coxon do not want to be a lap down. He's trying to fight it. Trying to get close enough to unlap himself again, but I don't I think that is a losing battle, I'm afraid. As now Yakes is up the inside. Well, I don't think it's much a matter of not willing to be lapped, which he probably doesn't care too much, but he has his own fight with Cesarius, even if Cesarius is behind, a bit in the distance, but this is a long race and he really needs to make the most points possible. And Indeed. while, of course, his, his position as lap car is lost against the leaders, uh, his race now is against Cesarius for that yep, good position I... and yeah, he needs to do the, the most he can to keep it. Indeed, I think what I, what I was meaning and thinking was that he at least as long as he felt he had a chance to be on the lead lap in case there was a yellow, he wanted to fight that. Uh, but obviously, as you say, now that he's behind the top three cars on a lap down, he is indeed in that kind of situation where uh, Schlapinski is the next car he's fighting. Yeah, it's a 12 seconds gap between them. Cesaris is fourth now and Richard is fifth, but still, I mean, every half a second counts, so understandably he wants to, to do the utmost he can to be sure he keeps that fifth position and also to, to be able to fight for the fourth with Cesarius. Indeed, indeed. But just to put into perspective, Cesarius last lap was 23.3, whereas in the case of Richard it was 23.4, so he's 
is obviously slowly getting um, behind, uh, losing time to Cesarius, but still, in this track anything can happen. I mean, just half a spin like he suffered before, in the case uh, of Cesarius, and he would be on top of him immediately. Mm. For sure. Oh, well, someone has lost the front wing as uh, it goes flying. Oh, that looked like it might have been the Gallus racing car once again. I'm sorry to say. Yep. Rob is again entering the pits. Yeah, unfortunately, the race is unraveling for the Dutchman, but... Uh, I think he has a puncture too. Indeed. Well... Still a race to be had though, so that's good. Uh, gap opening up a little bit for the top three. And looks like uh, Tim now up to sixth place on play on pace alone, with Saber not too far behind, so battle is still brewing there. Uh, and Jules Bouchard not too far behind either. Then a further lap back to Francisco Amaral, now up into ninth, as unfortunately Rob de Vries has decided to retire the car. But on a really good race there, so Rob should no, be Cesario proud of himself. Going, Cesario is going now into the pits. So let's, uh -huh. see. let's see how this goes. So presumably final pit stop of the evening for him. Ah, look at how he keeps the car angled towards <laughs> the exit. That, that, sh that, that shows some preparation and uh, expectation of even if I get someone in front of me, I am going to get an exit straight away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the fairly so, speed is up the now Wow, up the Adam Hackman in 12th with the fastest lap of the race. 22 yeah, 8 3 2. <laughs> about to overtake now Richard Coxon and look at that Coxon is now in front of Slapinski after that pit stop Although, mm. oh I see Wilkes coming out of the pits no into the pits Wilkes yep. is coming into the pits now hmm. Vadim is signaling pits also let's see let's see if he dives in no he goes for another lap so maybe this is a case of them trying to go very long um, we saw them go quite a bit long, like a lap or two longer than the other guys around them, so maybe Yeeks and Vadim will be going long again, as Coxon is now up to third, as Wilkes is now coming out of the pits. Looks like he should be safely ahead of Schlapinski still. And Alan Hackman enters the pits now, that could be the explanation for this very quick lap, he was very low on fuel. Well, still, that is a very pacey lap. Yep. So, that check now in the pits. Jakes is, however, staying out and is coming to the pits now. Okay, so he has been saving a bit of fuel behind. Let's see how it goes for Tatschak and where he comes out relative to Wilkes. Yep, this is now very important because it's... Oh, there go Jakes. It's very easy to lose um, a full second here. So let's see, that check is coming out, that check is coming out. Where is Wilkes? Quite a bit behind still. No, sorry, uh, four it seconds coming behind. in the same turn, but... Right, I think, I think that Buddy even gained something. About a second he gained, I think. Looking at it, roughly. Yeah, let's see what happens with this. this is very important now. Well, Coxon now coming out of the pits. Yep. For his Previously we've seen that Tachak has been very quick on the full tank. Uh, Wilkes not quite as quick. And then well, obviously... He's in the lead. Wow, look at that. Maybe he put in a little so bit he, less he, fuel. Yeah, he undercut Vadim big time because that's, that's a two second gap. I would gather that he only changed two tires. That's Possibly. the only explanation I can find. Well, that or he put in less fuel and hoping that he can still 
make the lap time without using as much fuel. Yep, or a bit of everything. Indeed. We don't know. But he is now in the lead, 1.7 seconds ahead. Well, it's quite a chunk. And there's Tacha behind, Wilkes. Very heavy now on fuel. He has problems with slower cars that are actually much lighter in terms of low fuel. Indeed, that is also one of the one of the things with this kind of busy racetrack. The gap between uh, Slapinski and Richard is meanwhile the same as it was before, 12 seconds, nothing changing there. But the X is now running away. I mean, 2.7 seconds. That's the lead that he has over him. And I'm starting to suspect a bit what you said, because either he put less fuel, or he's simply using more boost, because he's confident he can keep the full consumption in check. We did see uh, Vadim in the middle of a pack of cars, so maybe a combination of uh, Yeks having the luck of getting out in front of them, Vadim a bit of bad luck ending up in the middle of them, and Wilkes even further so with being at the very back of the, that group group of gaggle of cars, and it's one of those things, but uh, Yeks definitely going quick at the moment compared to the other two. Um, the gap between Coxon and Lapinski has gone down a full two seconds, but that's probably because of lap traffic that Slapinski found. I don't see major discrepancies here between the lap times. But still, that's a big chunk of time. Let's see if Coxon is able to keep that freedom. Oh! Sepharius? Ah, no, sorry. That's uh, Simon Watman who got bottled between another car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's in cleaner now. Wilkes now trying to overtake right without. Bit of miscommunication that it looked like. Yeah, this. Uh, look at the effect of the traffic. I mean, Vadim is now a full three seconds in front of, of Richard Wilkes, which was one point something previously, but going through traffic is basically throwing a dice here. So you can be held up, you can be passing swiftly, who knows? Of course, the most skillful drivers are able to pass better, but still, it's always rolling a dice. Oh, David Saber is out! Oh, dearie me, he was having such a great race! Whatever happened to him? He went into the pits. Oh, don't tell me he blew the engine and had to run for the pit lane. Oh, he did. That's a ter that, that looks like an internal engine failure of some description, that dark, black, that blackish smoke. So, Wilkes is now catching up quickly with Vadim. I wonder what's going on here. Jake's in turn is a full four seconds in front, which means that he really put one more gear and didn't look back. But Wilkes is now catching up quickly. I wonder what's going on here. If Vadim had some kind of moment. Or... Could be, or maybe he has and to he preserve seems to the recover fuel. now. He seems to recover now because the gap is, is increasing. So whatever happened... Maybe one bad corner. Off the maybe. boost and having to rework it. Yeah, maybe a bit of a moment at some point. So our first engine failure, and uh, presumably th there might be more to come then. Really sorry to see Sabre retire, he's had a lackluster year. Was on for points here.
<coughs> so the X coming now to a very big chunk of lap traffic. Let's see if that hampers him or not. Going on the outside, oof, that was a very wild move. But he couldn't afford to lose time here. Uh, that's probably lag because his car is moving around a lot in my screen. Oh, Slapinski. Ah, no. Okay. I thought he was diving for the pits, but no, he was making room for the leader. EX not willing to lose any, tra any time behind traffic here. Very aggressive. Very aggressive when negotiating it. Vadim, meanwhile, what, what's going on here? Vadim now has opened a big gap to Wilkes. Two seconds, maybe either bad luck in traffic or a moment for Wilkes. I think that's 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 simply Wilkes Wilkes's lack of pace in a, with a full tank. He's so much quicker on low fuel, but the car isn't set up for when there's a there's a lot of fuel in the car, so. I'm not sure, they were 1.5 seconds apart just two laps ago. So. Oof, Vadim now bottled between, uh, behind lap traffic. Oof, there's... Who John themselves trying are trying to, to sort there. themselves out. Yeah. John team trying to lap more cars and... Yeah, that that's hampering for him a lot. Oh, it's complicated to negotiate the traffic here. Indeed. <clears throat> no, I think it's Wilkes' turn now to be bottled behind. Yep. So Yake's proving his prowess with dealing with traffic for sure, keeping the distance and increasing it and. Maybe losing a little bit when Tachak is running on his own, but uh, really dealing with the traffic very well. This is a remarkably cool head from Wilkes, uh, because he, he really has nothing to lose here. He's not in the... Oh, whoa, whoa! What? what? Just as I say that... Oh, that's a blown engine! That's a blown engine indeed. That's a blown engine. Wow! Oh, and another one. Look at the pit lane entry. Who's that? Bouchard. Bouchard. Barbecue for Bouchard here. When he was coming out of the pits, actually. So let's see if we can find where... There is Bouchard. No, he blew out on track and he ended up on the pit lane entrance because he didn't want to be out on track with the blown engine. Aye, aye, aye. He blew down the front straight. And that is, the others have been ra ra rather small. Jules Bouchard is an absolute, absolute bomb of an engine failure. That that would be where they would be out with the uh, cement dust and everything to try and sl clean the track up. That is massive. Well, and this proves that folks on hanging on there might even be rewarded at the end. Because wow. Now he has been what a catapulted Oof. to fourth position. Indeed. Which keeps his spaceship hops very much alive. Quite so. And only eight seconds now and behind it, yeah, because let's Let's face it, Bono is going to be a Russian roulette. Absolutely. Because uh, it's a 500 miler, so imagine the engine failures that we get to see there. Mm-hmm. Also, Coxon won the Indianapolis 500, which proves that he can run very well in the 500 milers. So, his best chances of trying to level things towards the end of the season and, and be able to fight in the last moment are obviously uh, depending on Pocono. Whatever happens in Pocono, <coughs> it's going to be very much championship deciding, I guess. Well, it, it'll certainly be deciding if one finishes and one doesn't. It's going yes. to be ma make a big difference, but if everyone finishes, then uh, it'll be one of those... Oh dear, will it be a nail by the end? Will it be a three-way fight at Tamiami? 
<coughs> and if it if it becomes that, I might need to get the, both the popcorn, uh, the soda, the uh, <laughs> sh the chips, and uh, whatever those like bacon crisps uh, are called. Uh, although they won't be bacon for me, I don't quite. L I I struggle with smoked meat. Um. But either way, it's going to be very interesting to watch the final few rounds of this championship. And I think Slapinski just unlapped himself from Jake's, who probably nearly got a heart attack when he saw <laughs> several engines blowing at the same time. Not unlikely, indeed. No, well, this is the typical wake-up call. Uh -huh. There's a situation where you, even if you're in the lead or having a good time, cleaning the field, going quicker and all that, and all of a sudden you say, oh my goodness, this could end very bad very quickly. Especially considering you, we saw two of them in more or less the same time. So, Coxon in the pits now, again. Or what should be his last stop? Oh, looks like Chacon is in trouble. That car is not ooh, looking happy at all. That looks like a very very considerable considerable toe out on the rear end of his car. <coughs> and obviously we have Vatman in 14th and Bo still running in 15th. With Oscar Tim retired uh, a little while ago. So, Coxon in the pits. I don't know if he's making repairs in the car. This seems a bit of a long pit stop. Uh, he probably is confident about the distance he has to the car behind. Well, and he knows that it's nearly impossible for him to catch up with uh, Slapinski. So, probably he just wants to make sure that his car is as fit as possible for the end of the race. Could be. He lost a position a very to long, team, but... Very long... Uh, Ooh, here comes team. Amaral as well. Yep. And Coxon still box there in the pits. Huh? Is he what? going to lose a position now to Amaral? Let me see because I don't know if he had a... Yes, he does. I didn't know if Amaral was one lap down. Seems that wasn't the case and this is a hugely long pit stop for Coxon. Here comes Roja as well, as well in a few seconds time. I wonder this? if uh, Coxon hit the wall again somewhere when we missed it. I don't know. His engine seems to be stopped. So he knows that he's in for a long pit stop. Seven now. Here comes Ray as well in uh, about a lapse time. Oh, that's highly unfortunate for Coxon. That will make it a little bit more tricky, but at the front. Now only half a second between Yakes and Tatschak. Whatever time Yakes had in lead, had it has now been cut to more or less nothing. And let's see, I'm on board with Tatschak as he is running in behind Yakes. Let's see what he can do. Yet another position down for Coxon, he's having a hard time close by. I need it. Jason White is now only one lap down to him. I don't know what's going on. Ooh, Jake's okay. way wide! Wow! Vadim up the inside on the exit of two. Ye Vadim Tachak back in the lead. And Coxon is out on track now in ninth position. Looks like Yakes is struggling with a front right tire. That, or he's completely off the boost now and running to the fuel limit. And obviously, with less traffic about, Tachak has suddenly found the extra pace he is able to run with more fuel in the car.
Definitely looks like Yex is running lower, lower boost. Of course, they had a similar pace in a straight line earlier, but now Vadim is quicker down the straight, so I, I would assume that uh, Yex put in a bit of a gamble and put less fuel in the car. Sadly, it has not paid off for him in the end. Uh, Schlapinski is still in the third. 15 seconds ahead, two, two laps behind the leaders, but 15. Ooh, as he's in struggle, in trouble, lapping cars. Uh, 15 seconds ahead of John Tim in fourth, uh, who has. Uh, no, sorry, two. He's 16. So sorry, Schlapinski is 16 seconds behind the leaders. Two laps ahead of Jon Team, who is in second, who is in fourth, uh, who has a further lap ahead of Francisco Amaral in fifth. So Amaral with another good finish coming up, if as long as his car survives another 14, 13, 14 laps. Uh, as uh, Coxon set has set the fastest lap of the race, so he is going hell for leather. Uh, yeah, Rocha, he's overtaking Hartmann and is now in eighth. Okie uh, Rocha in sixth. Uh, 24 seconds uh, behind uh, Amaral, with all a further 21 seconds to drift, and he has Coxon for close company. Coxon slide, slicing up the inside there and unlapping himself. So now another 25 seconds to go, and I th reckon he could probably do it. All the cars in front of Coxon are respectively uh, one more lap than each other. So in the case of that... Uh, so, the last car that is not lapped, that is still in the lead lap, that's Cesario Slapinski in third. But then, John Team is three laps down, Francisco Amaral four laps down, Luciano Rocha five laps down, Ryder Vidal six, and Coxon seven. So, he should be going the full lap around before overtaking Ryder Vidal, which is, I think, a bit unlikely at this point. Well, he's gaining a little bit over a second a lap, so he could do it. It'll be a close mm -hmm. call, but it could do it. Yeah, it could be, and I don't know. I don't think that anybody has to stop yet. But in any case, with 10 laps to go and the gaps a bit stabilized, do we have a trivia question, or was it already answered? Yep, we will look at it in a moment. Hackman in ninth, Jason White running out of top 10 at the moment. Nicely done. Uh, Simon Watman soldiering on, now running in 11th, so two points for him. Chacon in 12th, about 11-12 seconds ahead of uh, Bors. So Chacon currently with one point towards the championship, but Bors in fairly close behind. And with that, now that most battles, if not all, apart from the possibility of Coxon catching up to Ridol, let's have a look at the trivia question and the answer to that. So... To remind you of the question, it was who holds the official race lap record for Nazareth? Uh, the layout we are racing on, which was in use from 87 to 2004. Is it A. Alex Sanardi, B. Jill DeFerrin, or C. Greg Moore? Do you have any ideas on this, uh, Alberto? Well, adventure Jill de Ferran because he drove there to, I think he won the championship with Penske in 2000 and 2001. The cars were by then very quick. And if the track was still in use, then I guess that's about more or less the time when it could have been the, the quickest. It's a very good call and idea. Um... But unfortunately, it is incorrect. The correct answer is, as Berlin guesses in the chat, C. Greg Moore, who set, Greg Moore. yep, who set the Ooh, lap really? record, race lap record at a 19.514 in 1998. My goodness. So were those cars in '98 still quicker than 2000? Incredible. Indeed. I think uh, I think the late nine. The 97 to 99 um, crashes, among which Greg Moore was involved in, 
Um, yeah, he died in '99, and mm. that's oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Speaking of crashes, that's a car that has had a big shunt there in the in the infall. Well, that was Losing Hackman, the, unfortunately. That's Amaral, Amaral. Oh, Amaral, okay. and yes, I think he... Hackman was involved as well because Hackman has retired. Oh my! Oh. So Hackman is out. Oh, that's a big off indeed. Yep, that is Amaral. So I think Amaral went off first. Yep, so Amaral, so let's see, Amaral goes first, I think he, let's see, I think he runs wide, yeah, he runs wide off turn four, punctures the, the rear left, smacks the outside wall, and then tries to get down the bottom of the track, but Hackman ends up right in the way, and he hits the, the retaining wall for the pit road, more or less head on with the rear end, and the, both tires are taken off. Woof. So I was about to say just that Greg Moore died in in 99 in uh, Michigan, I think it was. No, in Fontana. Mm -hmm. I think it was. That, that was that that very big crash. But in any case, uh, what I wanted to say. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. Yep. Another car, another spin. That's Juha Boss. Oosh, 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 oosh. So tiredness taking out its course here. Front wing missing for him, and it needs to be said that uh, I think it's last yesterday. Uh, it would be uh, 22 years ago since Greg Moore passed away. Oh, as Vadim, Vadim wow, as Vadim Tachak has uh, finished the final lap and wins the race. As we are talking about other things, uh, uh, there we have the finish. Uh, Vadim Tachak wins the race. David Yakes finishes second. Uh, Sosai Shrapinski finishes third. Os uh, John Tim will finish fourth, with Luciano Rocha then in fifth. Ray Redol will finish sixth, with Coxon in seventh. Uh, Francisco Amaral will, although retired, finish in eighth. Uh, Jason White will be finishing in ninth, so that's a very good jump off the, up the finishing order for Jason. He's had a troublesome year with first the Gallus Honda and last time out with a paddock racing entry but now it finally comes together for a ninth place finish for him adam hackman a late race unfortunate incident finishes him in, him it classifies him in 10th simon watman finishes 11th and brun chacon picks up the final point for 12th place with Juha Bors finishing 13th our retirees were wilkes buchard saber tim oscar that is de vries ridol grant olsen da silva and Equino, with uh, Tachak understandably doing some donuts. Uh, let's give him just a bit of a moment here as he is first on the grass and then heads for the pit lane. As we can see that Jon Tim very happy as well doing some donuts. Nicely done, sirs. So, and I have to say goodbye at this point. And since we apparently won't be having any interviews, I think you will be closing the broadcast soon. Always a pleasure to share the broadcast with, with you, Jonathan, and speak to you soon. See you all at Pocono. Take care, Alberto. Thank you for joining us. User left your channel. So yes, quite a uh, quite a race that one. A lot of good action, a lot of good fun to watch. Um, with uh, Vadim obviously taking the win, and with that he will be taking over the championship lead. Uh, Yakes likewise, I think, will climb to th second in the championship with Coxon then dropping to third. Uh, Anis Nilsson, I noticed, was not racing tonight, so he will be remaining in fourth. Uh, and I believe uh, with the retirement of Wilkes, presumably... Um, Tiago Canola will remain in fifth in the championship standings. Um, Let's see, just to let you all know what is coming up in case no one joins the green room for an interview post-race. Uh, we have 
next weekend on November 6th, uh, the 8th, 7th Grand Prix International Automobile du Maroc, uh, the Moroccan Grand Prix, the final round of our, of our 1958 F1 Championship, um, Sunday, November 6th, that is. Uh, we will see if uh, it is broadcast or not. The championship was decided last time out with uh, Tim Hiller claiming the championship win. Um, we'll see whether we broadcast it uh, or I feel like I would like to drive in the final race. Um, either way, we might see you next weekend. Otherwise, we are still racing next weekend and uh, all good with that. And then in two weeks' time, I think it is... November 13th, indeed. We will have the Quaker State 500. The 500 mile race from Pocono. The final oval race of the championship series. Round 13 of 15 of this 87 cart. Where now... Um, me and names. Oh, uh, Vadim Tarsiak is leading the championship. But... Uh, no one has joined us for an, in for an interview, so with that and those reminders, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you all tune in, if not next weekend, then in two weeks' time for the Quaker State 500. Take care, and be kind to one another, and good night. <laughs>